Uh, hi, this is Robbie. You know, this is going to be one of the hardest videos I ever do. And I didn't know if I should do it as a live or a video, and I'm probably not even thinking right now. And nobody's here anyways, which is probably a good thing. Anyways. I'm at my vet's office probably for the dozenth time. And um, I guess what I'm trying to let everybody know is even though they are still working on Kitty, I don't think she's going to make it. I don't even know where the camera is. It's over there. Uh, I'm not going to answer any questions right now. I don't want to come to you and cry, but let me make something really quick and strong to all of you right now. I am only asking for prayers for Kitty. I'm not asking for money. I'm not asking you to buy any merchandise or, or products or anything. Just a little prayer. In reality, I know she doesn't have long. I have prolonged her life for a long time. So Gary doesn't even know I'm live. I'm at the vets. Okay. So let's start from the beginning so I don't have to do this ever again. I have a couple different vets that work on her and one of them asked me last week where'd you get this dog because she's so small she's what she's two and a half pounds so I told him she's our puppy and he goes our, your puppy tell me about her so I'll tell you about her because he said that's why she's dying he's a real rough to the point vet he's a good vet but I went to another one who is also excellent but he tries for you Years and years ago, oh my gosh, 20, 23 years ago, we had a, we had a Yorkie. We had two Yorkies. Actually, we had Dinky, which is another story, and a male Yorkie. And uh, Joey. <laughs> I went, I decided my daughter needed a dog. This was before she had cats or anything. And, and we went out, Gary and I, to find her a Yorkie. And I fell in love with both puppies the lady had and she gave me a good deal her daughter was in the movie business and they didn't have time for the puppies so I bought both puppies I'm giving you the full story this is not kitty and uh it didn't work out because I shouldn't have bought two I should have just got her one and the two Yorkies were tearing the house apart and she finally said she didn't want them so we took them back they were AKC registered and everything and we went to find homes for them and somebody came and picked up one of them Reese was her name and after they paid for her, it wasn't a lot we, we sold her for. Um, they said, oh, I can't wait. We're going to breed her. We have a male. And then Gary said, we have a male. Why don't we keep Haley and just keep her and we'll have puppies here and there. And then we'll have them fixed. So we did keep Haley. And Haley had a puppy in anyways that we've got. Let's just say we had Ginger. So that's how this all started. Kitty was born September 25th, 2014. And when she was born, we used to take the puppies to the vet when they're on their third to fifth day and for their tails. Well, we, she didn't go for a tail. That's why she's got a tail. She was that big and she was two ounces and she couldn't nurse. She couldn't do anything. So I, she couldn't feed from a dog bottle. So I work with animals. This is what I've done my whole life. And I, I couldn't two feed her. She was so tiny. So what I ended up doing was pipette feeding her and that was force feeding her. And she didn't do well on the dog formula. So she was raised on human baby formula. I figured that is the most cleanest regulated thing you can get. And I raised her on human baby formula, but she had no way of swallowing because her mouth was deformed. She didn't have cleft palate, but it was all deformed. So she couldn't suck. So I force fed her for three weeks, gently, around the clock, and uh, she lived. Gary said she wouldn't live, Vet said she wouldn't live. They said I was wasting my time, this dog was just nothing, and it was, she wouldn't live, and she did live. And uh, we kept her, we were looking to keep another dog, but we kept her. And she hated me. Let me tell you something. She hated me for a long time because she was so smart. She said, this is the lady that used to force feed me. She didn't want anything to do with me. She was Gary's dog. And 
she used to climb on the couch and climb on the top of the couch. Oh my gosh, she was getting on tables. She'd spring up on things. So tiny, you could not keep her contained. She could go through chain link fences. I've Somewhere I've got videos of her just running through a chain link fence, just right through the little the holes. She would just run right through. And so anyway, she was Gary's dog for years, years. And then about six years ago, she started coming with me into the garden and she saw me eating broccoli. That I actually saw the video the other night on there and she saw me eating it, so she wanted it. She didn't get a lot. I don't want any people coming and telling me, oh, that's what killed her, the broccoli. No, she gets little small pieces here and there, but she would try anything you would try. So she started, then she became both our dogs. She still will go to Gary. Even to this day, she goes to Gary because she remembers that's the lady that force fed me for the first three weeks of my life but she lived and she was healthy and she was fine <clears throat> and then when we have her teeth done a few years ago we noticed um, that her blood work was off on her kidneys this is very common with small Yorkies <clears throat> apparently it's common with all Yorkies oh I don't have water <clears throat> so being aware of it we were careful on her diet we switched her diet and we've kept her alive for years she had to go last year where she's put on an IV uh, to flush her system her electrolytes are good her blood work is good but her kidney her kidneys were not functioning correctly but she kept going so last year I thought she was on her way out we thought we were gonna lose her last year and then she came back out of it We've had her this past week, so if I see some of you caught that I was off, I'm still doing videos and gardening, but it's still hard. It's going to be very hard. I'm going to miss her. Like I said, I'm doing all the talking and I will read. I will read through this later. I'm not putting her down, so this is now she's alive. She's at, I'm at the vet's office right now. It's just that they're doing something and he told me to come back at one. I said, I can't leave her here anymore because she screamed. I found out the other day, all day, she had to stay here for two days on an IV. She eats for me though, with a pipette. She eats for me now. But anyways, um, I already forgot what I was saying. Anyways, we went through this last year and then she came out of it. Lo and behold, all of a sudden she's back to herself again. I, as much as I, like I said, I'm only asking for prayers. Don't you dare throw any money at me. I'm not here asking for a penny. I would pay anything to keep her alive. But we just did an x-ray and she is a little backed up. So they're giving her an enema now. I know she can't go to the bathroom because she's too weak. So that's what he's doing now. He's going to give her some, some fluids again. And I'm going to take her home. And as long as she's not suffering. I'm not going to let her suffer. She doesn't seem like she's in any pain. She's very aware. She likes being carried around. But the IV that she's been on this whole week isn't really doing much. It's so odd because he said everything looks so good on her. But again, she's going to be nine in a few months. And I don't know what else to say. I just didn't know how I was going to say tell anybody my neighbor knows. And she's all upset. And we're all upset and my dad's not feeling good he's having problems now so it's like just one thing after another but I figured out since I have to sit and wait an hour in the car I thought I'd come on and just do this this one time I don't know I'm you know when something does happen I don't want to go through and make a video of reminiscing on kitty or anything um I hope the signal's good I don't even know I'm just sitting here waiting he told, like I said, he told me to wait till one. I said, no, I'll wait in the car. And he said, okay, now we will be good. They just want to kind of clean her system out. I just want a little prayers. She's, she's had a really, really good life. Believe you me, I know that. And she's been spoiled, but she's my friend. And so many of you know that we've all gone through this. And unfortunately, some of us have gone through this way too many times. And like I was just talking to them. It's so odd. You've got horses that go 30 years and you've got cats that can live to 20 years and you got birds. My friend just lost his bird close to 50 years old, 40, 40 something years old, 45, 48. And dogs just don't have enough and long enough time. It just, but then how's, how good is long? When Gary and I, uh, before we got married, 
and Gary was living here for a while. I told him to get a healer. He always wanted a healer. And he said, no, he's not going to get a healer unless, unless I'm going to marry him and he's going to stay here. So when we got married in December, we went in January. I started looking for a healer for him. Rex was our healer. And I found a guy out in Asperia that had a ranch with healers. It was, they were tough to find. I'm rambling now, just so you know. So if you want to leave, you can leave. So I called the guy at night and I said, oh my gosh, my husband wants a healer. We're going to come out. We'll buy one of the puppies. Oh yes. He said, it's such a drive, but we'll all, we'll get up at four, four thirty, and we'll drive out. He said, call me before you leave. So we got up in the morning. He had a whole litter of puppies and I call him in the morning and he says, I'm so sorry to say, but a group of guys came out from Montana, mind you. I think it was Montana, but Gary can correct me on that if it wasn't Montana, and bought the whole litter for their ranch. And I said, oh no, and Gary was devastated. And then, he, and then I said, I, I can't believe this. But I understand people can't hold dogs, believe you me. When we used to have Yorkies here and there, you would have 10 people call and one would show up and you'd be waiting for everybody. So then he said, well, let me tell you something. I have one puppy here that nobody wants. And I said, what's wrong with him? Why doesn't anybody want him? Oh, he looks different. He's got one ear up, one ear down. He said, if you want to drive out, I will give you him. So I asked Gary and Gary said, nah, if nobody wants him, what, what good is that? And I said, because this may be the dog for you. There's a reason that dog is there. So we drove out to Hesperia and he was beautiful. He was sweet and a uh, pudgy dog. So cute, a little pop belly. And we brought him home and I said to Gary, I can fix that ear. I know what that ear is. It's just torn cartilage and he's so young. He was only, uh, I think he was 12 weeks old or something. So I rolled up some gauze and put it in his ear and wrapped it. And within about five days, I took the gauze off. off. His ear was beautiful and up. He died in a few years ago, quite a few years ago. He died in January. April 16th of that year, he would have been 20. And let me tell you something, people came to me and said, wow, you've had him so long and it's so good. You don't even have to mourn him. Look how long, you know, it doesn't make it easier. 20 years he went, he was with us and almost 20 years he was with us. And you're so used to them there. You know, he was at Gary's side all the time that it doesn't make it easier. So. I will let you know what's what's going to happen here. Um, I'm grasping at straws. I know that. I'm just trying everything. So I know in my gut, no matter what, that I tried everything that's possible. I will not let her suffer. If it looks at any point where she's in pain, I will have to do whatever I have to do because I've done this in the past. My very first dog, well, that's actually, I had a, I had a, uh, I had an Irish setter for a short time, but I couldn't keep it. That, but really my very first dog was a Yorkie. My, my son was three months old and my Yorkie now was three months old. They were born the same month of January. I had her for 15 and a half years and I did a terrible thing. I will say that. I didn't want to lose her. She was at that point almost 16 years old. She was blind, she was deaf. And I was going through a horrible divorce. I mean, I don't want to get into it. I have never talked about it, but let's put it this way. My kids wanted the divorce. I think you got enough to see how bad this was. And I didn't want to lose my friend, my Yorkie. So I took her to my vet at the time. I lived in, I lived out in Sunland. He was in Tonga. And I had her on an IV for a week and he begged me. He said, she's not going to get better. And I, it was terrible what I did. I should have had her put down. It was time, but... I will never do that again. And he was mad, my vet. He'd call me every day, please. I said, is she in pain? No, he said, I've got her slightly sedated. I've got her on an IV. This is not kitty, this is cookie. And I will not do that again. I, we have gone with other dogs. I mean, you know, we all have dogs where most of us get dogs and there's always these special ones. So cookie was my special one. And then I didn't deprive the kids of any dogs. I didn't want any more dogs. They had, they had a Sheltie and you know, the Sheltie was like the family dog going in and out of the house and with them all the time. But you always have these special dogs. Something comes around. And then 
Let's see, Gary had Rex. Oh, my daughter got me a Yorkie, a half Yorkie, oh my God, half Chihuahua. She didn't tell us. That was a gift. Well, that goes way back. 90, 93, 94, 94, I think it would have been. And, um, yeah, it would have been 94. She gets us this dog. Gary was furious. He said, we're not having dogs in the house. And dogs, and we have racks. We don't. It took me a year to decide to keep the dog. A year. A year. My daughter said, oh, this dog is so cute. She was only seven, eight weeks old. She bites you and snaps and plays. She was not playing. <laughs> she was not playing that dog. And so I, I think I was sick. And then I, I think I had a cold or something. And she brought her over. And I could not deal with this dog. I actually knew the vet that raised her. And that was a different vet I had back then in the 90s. And I called him like 10 times. I got to bring this dog back. And he goes, oh, I'll take her back in a minute. He had the mother. And it took me a year to figure out that she was so smart. And that's why she bit you. Because she would go to the refrigerator and she'd pull me by the pants and she'd take me to the fridge and then she'd point. And I don't know what, what a dog is pointing at, this little tiny dog. And she would know if she wanted yogurt, if she wanted cheese, if she wanted chicken, if she, she knew exactly what she wanted. I would take out the yogurt. Do you want yogurt? I'd ask her. And if it wasn't right, she'd bite you. So I had to put that back. And then I would take the cheese out. Do you want a little piece of cheese? And if it wasn't right, she would bite you. And then you go through everything. And when you found the right thing, my hand is falling asleep. And then she was happy. And then I realized she actually understood everything we were talking. Gary remembers. There's so much about that dog. She even joked. That dog had a, 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 a sense of humor. Oh, my gosh. She would do something and then laugh and jump. She was the oddest dog. But after about a year, I realized this dog was smarter than us. That was hard losing her. And I still miss Dinky so much. So this is, Kitty is very special. Kitty is unique. I mean, even last week she didn't want to eat. It was so bizarre. And she kept looking at the camera, my phone. And I picked up my phone and I held my phone up and she ate. It's like she only wanted to eat if I turned the, or had the phone on her thinking it was a camera. And she was not good last week. So I just wanted to give you a heads up. I don't mean to sit and cry. I try to make everything happy. You know, but, you know, life is life. And uh, I figure this is the best way to do it. And you all are keeping me company while I sit. So what they're doing now, like I said, is she is impacted. And I'm, I'm guessing that's because she's really too weak to pass anything. So they're going to clean her up a little bit. And they are giving her an enema. He's going to give her fluids. It's not going to make things better. She's been off and on treated. She's been on kidney medication now for a good year. She hates the kidney dog food. She doesn't want, she hates it. She wouldn't eat it. There's, so there's no way to give her that. I'm looking to see if they end up calling me or what. And that's it. So all I'm asking for is prayer, pr prayers. Do not put any money here because that's not what I'm here for. I'm only asking for a little prayer, no matter what happens. You all got to see her become part of the garden and part of everything, and she's a special little dog. So anyways, they're good vets. I, I know they mean well, and he's, he's trying for me, but I'd be so happy if I got six more months out of her, or at least make it to her birthday, but healthy. You know, I mean, to the point where she's more active. So I will definitely, definitely keep you in touch and let you know what happens. And I mean, realistically, and Gary's a realist. It's not looking good. You know, and like I said, September 25th, 2014, we didn't even know if she was even going to live when, when she was born she was like she, she was like so tiny and and um there was no hope for her even when you know like I told Gary well there, I, I don't remember how many at the time there might have been a total of four puppies there could have been three I don't remember but I said you know he was take, going to the vet and I said she needs her tails and her tail and her dew claws done and 
He said, nobody's going to do this dog. There's nothing there. This dog is not going to live. And like I said, I took her to the vet. Nobody thought she was going to live. But she did. She lived to be a feisty, nasty little thing. She hated me. Uh, it was like, oh, I don't want. She wouldn't go near me. And she, yeah, but I kept her alive. So she was Gary's little dog. And he'd lay on the couch. And she'd lay on him. And she'd get up on the back of the couch. And he, like I said, in case you're just checking in, he named her Kitty. That's why some people said, why? Even, I said, what are we going to call her? And he goes, she's a cat. This dog is not even a dog. She's a cat. She's running along the furniture. She's jumping on things. So Gary was the one that named her Kitty. I don't know how long we'll have her for, but I know that she's been with you all for this for, for quite a few years now. And I figured this is probably one way of doing it. So... I can't read all the comments, but I promise I will, I will go back and read them later. I've never done this in my car live. I don't even know what time it is. He said, give me an hour. He wanted me to leave her for a few hours, but I promised her, and whether she understands me or not, I would not leave her. She doesn't want to be here. She, doesn't, she wants to be home. She's got her heat blanket. She's got her brother, which is Joey, who is... Oh, God, Joey. No, no, Joey was the York got Jack and Jack is a year older than her and he is her brother he is her brother we kept him I think Gary wanted to keep him and he's tiny too solid as a rock but you know he's he's like he's just a dog so and, and, and if you know what I mean he's yeah, he's 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 not interested in the garden or anything like that but he's really a good guy he'll come to you kitty doesn't come to you I take her to my garden and she disappears in the garden, like the bird garden, and you be calling her. She's, she's not going to come because she's going to come when she wants. If she's busy, she's busy. And, and she scares me to take her anywhere because she doesn't listen, Kitty. Where Jack will listen, and so will Molly. Oh, my gosh. Molly, Molly will come to you right away. But, you know, gardening, she's not interested in that. But that's okay. So they're, they'll probably end up getting more attention now than ever. So... Jack was laying with her last night, and she has her own heat blanket on the couch. She's got her own couch. I'm watching all the dogs coming in. Um, yeah, she ended up with the big couch. I don't know how, I guess that's the way they are. The dogs end up with a big couch with a heat blanket on it. So you would lay there too. And uh, no, and you can wash those things. I washed it, and Gary said, you're gonna break that heat blanket. No, put it through the washer and dryer, and works perfect. And they love their heat blanket. So, whatever, like I said, I just wanted to kind of let you know, this is what's going on. I love that dog so much. She is a little person, and she's so smart and so stubborn. So that's basically it. She actually, last week, I think I did the, um, the deck, and you can see it in her eyes. I had already brought her to the vet. Let me see. Oh, Malachi is there. Hi. She's taking care of everything for me. Um, I went out to do the deck. She was already under doc the vet's care, but she wasn't left at the vet yet. And she, you could see it in her eyes, and I tried to clean her face, but she doesn't like the sun. She hasn't liked the sun for a while. I don't know what that is, if that was the kidney stuff or what, but the sun, any glare bothers her. But she did come out. I did not ask her to come out. You know? Um, she had gone to the vet on Friday, and Friday they ran her blood work. Her buns were, her, well, some of her blood work is off the chart. And, her, and that one vet was very blunt and said to me that she's going to be nine. She's a tiny, tiny teacup. She was a runt, and she's on her way out. And I asked him for all this stuff I wanted to do, and he told me no. He said, you're going to waste your money. You're going to waste your time. And he said no, so I waited for my other vet who was on vacation who came back. And he understands. We need it. He knows I need to I need to have peace within myself to know I tried. And I don't think there'll be anything else that I can do. Like I said, she's been on an IV all week to bring fluids in her. But it seems to have if anything it's weakened her, but it's probably not the IV. It's probably it's probably her, you know, her organs, and she's a little tiny dog. Somebody told me the other day, wow, 
two and a half pounds and she got to almost nine, that's good for a tiny dog. I knew that from years ago. I actually knew somebody that used to raise teacups and they told me they don't live long. They don't live usually the tiny, tiny micro teacups like that. They live for I don't know, seven years if you're lucky. So I don't know. It was not intended. She was not purchased. She was born and raised by us. And, and see now Jack is small. He's the same size as her, but he's solid as a rock. And it's just different, but he wasn't a runt. He was just small. She was a runt. She was definitely a runt. Like I said, she had a deformed mouth when I thought, her, you can see her mouth's not right. Just the way it's shaped. And you can, you could see that right away. It wasn't, like I said, it wasn't cleft palate. She didn't have a hole or anything, but she couldn't suckle from that. So, and who knows what else was going on. I'm not coming on to break anybody. My heart is breaking for you. I, oh, she rescued a three pound dog. And that was Debbie C-A-R-O-N. I've been through this before and usually you know, and it's easy. A friend of mine years ago, oh my gosh, must have been 40 years ago. This is scary how long. She had a Yorkie. She was raising Yorkies and she came over to the house with this little Yorkie. That's when I had Cookie. She comes over with this little puppy. Oh, puppy's bouncing off the walls. She says, it's such a shame. I just came from the vet. The dog's got basically no liver and I have to go take the dog and put it down. I said, put this puppy down. The puppy looks fine. No. The Everything came back. The puppy is going to be gone in a matter of weeks. So I said to her, um, I think my daughter was home. And my daughter was little. Please let us have the puppy. I said, how can we take this puppy? I said, this puppy is basically dying. And I think it was my daughter and son, but, she, but he's not dead yet. His name was Buster. I think we named him. And... Uh, I said, but he's not going to live. And they said, it's okay, we know. These are two little kids. We know and we understand, they said, however long we have him for. And I, that was a real tough decision, but we did keep him. And you know, we kept him alive for eight months. He was on a rice diet with a little bit of lean chicken. Oh, what a diet he was on. We kept him alive for eight months. And when he had a seizure and he passed, I went to my doctor, who was Dr. Cravoy at the time. He used to work out of the, uh, back then, I think they were working from the LA Zoo, he, Cravoy and Dr. Pitts. And um, he said to me, he passed, because I got him down there with a really bad seizure. He said, can I do a necropsy? And I said, of course, of course. And he called me up, he goes, I have no idea how you kept this Yorkie alive because the liver was gone. It, it, the arteries and everything had bypassed the liver. There was really nothing there. He said, I don't know how he lived that long. And you know, he had a good life. I will tell you though, that my Yorkie, that was Cookie at the time. Oh, she was playing and playing with this puppy in the house when my girlfriend was over. That was my best friend. I've lost my girlfriend too. But, uh, oh, this is really a downer for everybody today. Um, Cookie's playing with, with, let's say, Buster, because that's what we called him But when he was left there. And he's playing and playing and just having a good old time. And then my girlfriend gets in the car, waves goodbye, and leaves. My Yorkie st stops. She was smart, too, Cookie. Turned around and looked at this dog. Watches my friend drive away. Turns around, walks in the house, and did not look at that puppy for the eight months she lived there. She was pissed that that dog was left there she was another one that was the diva of the house did not want that so she did not interact with the dog once that dog was left there she would not play with the dog she wanted nothing to do with the, oh god gosh yorkies are really different dogs but we kept him alive we had him for eight months he'd play and everything until um he would periodically have seizures. And then one seizure, he wasn't coming out of it. So I rushed him to the vet and left him there and he didn't come out of that one. But he lived for eight months for a puppy that was not supposed to even live for a matter of weeks. So we go through it. That was, a, I mean, the kids were easier with it. They understood because they knew it's never easy. It's not easy for me. It's not easy for you. It's never easy, but 
I think when somebody says, oh, we've been through it so many times, that means we've had heart. We've had love in our life. We've had, we do what we have to do. We have a dog and however long they live for, which is never long enough, we give the love we can and then we, we guess we have to go on. I just don't know why they were given such short lives. But like I said, we had Rex for 20 years almost. And even 20 years wasn't long enough, so it's never long enough. It's never long. Whether it's a matter of 8 months or 20 years, you miss them so much. I will go back through and read this. Like I said, I have no idea what time it is. Mike doesn't tell me, but uh, they know where I am. And I'll go in there soon. And I want to take her home. I don't want to leave her. She is very aware, but she can't really walk. That's the problem because she's so weak. She's not crying, except when she's left at the vet. She doesn't, she's, she knows where she wants to be. That's, she's always had that kind of mind frame where if I bring Molly here to have her teeth done or something done, or, Molly's fine, okay. Even Molly was here when she broke her leg when she was a puppy. We still never figured out how she broke her leg. You know, and it's like, okay, that's where I'm supposed to be. And okay, you're here to pick me up. But she's more, oh, he's looking for me. Uh, no, he's not looking for me. He's talking to somebody else that's got a dog there, my vet. I don't know if you can see. I'm probably going to get sick. <laughs> Why am I going to get sick? He just came back from a vacation and he's sick. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. Anyways... I'll go back through and read. I wanted to give you a heads up. I didn't want to come on and just tell you something happened to her without telling you. And all I'm asking for is prayers. And like I said, it just may be her time. And I do understand that. And it doesn't make it easy. I'm a city girl and Gary's a country boy. He was raised on a farm with sheep and everything. So he's very different. And don't, don't kid yourself. This is bothering him greatly. But he also doesn't like and believe animals should suffer. And I'm making sure she's not suffering. And that's one thing. I will not let her suffer. I tried to keep Dinky alive years ago. Heart medication. She was in heart failure. Oh my gosh. Surgeries. Everything. And at the end, I remember she actually looked like she was more angry than anything. And so... My thing is I want to at least try. I have to know in my gut that I try. All right. Uh, it's hard for me to read because we've got a real, it was pouring all last night. Cloudy day and Gary is home working on a video. So let's hope he gets his video done and nothing's going to change. We're still doing gardening and, and the hummingbirds. And um, I just, you guys are keeping me company. So I don't have to sit by myself. I, it's going to be hard. I, I don't even know how I can roll down without sticking my finger in front of the camera. You know, it's I can't go through everything and say hello to everybody. There's Rob. I think it's... Oh, I, gee. I don't have glasses. I don't wear glasses. That's what I'm going to need to do is get glasses one day. Crazy farm girl. You know, I can't do this. I will have to go through because there's so many of you. I appreciate this for the company, because that's what you're doing. You're keeping me company. Otherwise, when you get, like I said, my dad's not feeling well. My dad is 56 and he's he's not feeling that good. And my mother doesn't feel good. So it's kind of like everything is like piling. So, and I, and your heart, don't, I don't want to bring anybody down. I'm so happy and grateful that I could keep her alive at that point and have her for almost nine years, literally have her for almost nine years because I raised her. So it's not like she, I bought her and she was three months old. No. Okay. I think they're my, I don't know. I'm not sure if something's going on with somebody else. They keep coming out. No, they're looking for somebody else. Okay. Now I'm just sitting here hugs uh mary thank you um i know there's been tons and tons i can't think of anything else i will try to get a video done i don't know when i'm actually working on something that i think a lot of you might be interested in uh, making different hoops and stuff so i'll try to get that together at some point there's so much i gotta do i'm so behind it's 
it, I kind of slowed down in the garden and I was going full gun ho. And my daughter's sending me seeds like here, plant this, plant this. She, she knows, believe you me, she's so good with dogs. And well, she learned it. <laughs> she's so good with dogs. And, uh, she understands we've all gone through this and if we're good dog parents we will continue to go through it as long as we can i met a lady at the store the other day when i came here and dropped her off and i had to leave her and she had a little dog in a basket and i looked over i said how cute and she said yeah and she was younger oh, a lot younger than me she must have been in her 30s and i said to her um yeah, my dog's at the vet. I don't know what's going to be. She turned around. She said, if your dog doesn't make it, don't you dare let anybody get you another dog. And she was going, oh, no. Um, I'm live. Are you okay with that? I'm, I'm live. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> okay. She's ready to go home? She's ready to go home. She did release a, a decent amount of poop. So she did. Yeah, did. She's actually poop. doing okay. Let me put this down. I didn't expect this. But... Hold on, everybody. Okay, I don't know how to do this. Um, yeah, but does he need to see me for anything? Let me go over with him. I don't believe he does, but I'll double check. She actually looks better than she did when... I don't know if I should say goodbye to everybody. They're all going to want to see her. Is it okay if you're in here? Um, oh, yeah, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> don't get sick because he's got a cold. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm going to get sick. I don't know. Anyways, there's Kitty. I don't know if... Can you... I can't see the camera. Can they see her? Yes. There she is. She actually looks more aware. <laughs> Did you don't know what he gave her fluid or he told yeah, me? They gave her some sickly fluids. Yeah, they did. More fluids. Mm -hmm. I promised you we weren't gonna leave you here. Okay, she's going home. I'm going. Sorry about that. I'm gonna sign off. They brought her to my. Look at this. I get car service. I'm gonna sign off, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. And I will keep in touch. And now I gotta figure. Look. Oh my gosh, all the hearts. <laughs> She is so well known. Better than me. <laughs> bye bye, everybody. Have a good day. And all I want is prayers. No money thrown at me. I don't want to see a penny. Just prayers that maybe we can get keep her for a few more months. Bye bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for keeping me company.